welcome back to my channel. My name is Danielle and I am the owner of Damn Fancy Creations and the Drunk Flamingo Glitter. If y'all are new to my channel, I do want to let you know that you can catch my content in two other places. I have a large tutorial group on Facebook as well as a smaller, more personal Patreon group where I offer exclusive content, free digital files, discount codes, and fun group challenges each month. Both of those groups are going to be linked in the description in case they sound like something you guys want to check out. Today's tutorial is a new technique that I haven't done before. It is something that is really kind of catching on in the Tumblr world, which is using foils to apply to your Tumblr. Um, I've seen a lot of people use foil transfers, foil sheets, all kinds of fun stuff that I didn't even know you could use on Tumblrs. So when I found out that you could, I had to order some and uh, see what all the hype was about. And I'm really glad I did. Um, so this is the first tumbler that I used with foils. And I just kind of wanted to do a distressed um, kind of, I don't know, application on the top and bottom rims of the tumbler. And I really, really like how it turned out. This is a silver leopard foil that I'm using. The, the leopard print is almost like it's not as noticeable, which is what I was going for on this tumbler. I wanted it to kind of have a winter silvery effect, but I had to add some leopard print in there, but I didn't want it like in your face leopard print. I wanted it kind of understated. Um, and I'm really happy with how this turned out. So if you guys are ready to see how I applied these fun foils. Let's get started. Alright guys, so here is everything you need to get started. I went ahead and prepped a tumbler white. I did not um, epoxy it, it's just spray painted with a flat white Rust-Oleum. I am going to use Tacket. To apply the foil, I'm just going to squeeze a little bit out in my little medicine cup and I'm going to use a dry brush to apply the tacket. This is the foil we are going to be using. I believe it's called Koi Leopard in Silver. And this is pretty much what it looks like. I purchased the roll and it's very, very thin. The image is on one side and on top of the image is a clear plastic film. Um, I'm also going to have a cup of water handy because as soon as I get done applying the tacket, I'm going to dump that brush into the water so the tacket doesn't um, get hard or dry and um, I can clean it out later. So I was trying to see the best way to apply this. Um, I was just going to pour it in my medicine cup, but I decided to just plop some on my cup. And a little bit of this tacket goes a long way. You do not need a thick layer of this tacket because if it's too thick, it won't really dry all the way. It will kind of be like a blob of tacky glue. Um, so we want to make sure that everything is thinned out pretty good. A lot of people do mix tack it with water. I don't do that. I just apply it straight to the cup. I feel like watering it down can make it a little less tacky in some areas and I want to get a pretty even tackiness coverage, I guess. So I'm just taking the remaining tacket that's on my brush and just brushing from the top down along the top edge. And I am just lightly kind of dragging that tacket to the center of the tumbler. I know it's very hard to see where this glue is since my tumbler is white and the tacket is white, but you know, it is what it is. It's just glue, we're just bringing it down. You guys can see the shiny parts are where the glue is. 
Um, if this was on a darker base, then you would be able to see the glue. And I am just dry brushing some of this tacky glue across the center of my tumbler, just so if I wanted to stress some of the spots in the center with the foil, then I can do that as well. Um, I am making sure that my seams are covered with this, with the tacket, because you want to make sure that the seams get some of the foil on there and not just a weird line. So I'm trying to show you guys where the glue is right now. Y'all can kind of see how it's kind of distressed at the top going towards the bottom. Y'all can see some of the spots in the center are kind of shiny. That's where the tacket is. And now I'm going to dry this with my heat gun. Um, if you want to, you can just let it sit for 15, 20 minutes until it's good and dry. But for the purpose of this video, I am just going to use my heat gun and dry this tacket. And if this was a darker base, you would be able to see it dry much quickly. Um, you do want to make sure that all of the tacket glue is clear before you try to apply the foil or glitter or whatever you're using to attach to the tacket. Because if it's not dry all the way, then the foils will not stick to the tumbler. It will basically be like trying to apply something to Mod Podge if it's not dry. And there are different adhesives you can use. I know some people just use regular clear spray and when the spray is almost dry then they apply the foils um, i got my foils from artistic painting studio and she does make a specific adhesive for the foils but i know that a lot of those are mainly used for furniture um, but i do believe they work on tumblers as well but this is just what i had on hand um, i did want to see if tacket would work i had not seen anybody use tacket yet so i just wanted to try it out to see if it would work and i was pretty happy with the results um, the tacket and the dry brush does produce more of a distressed look so if you're wanting a more uniform coverage then I would suggest trying a spray adhesive or maybe one of the um, adhesives designed to attach foils to objects. So you can kind of touch the tacket um, and kind of see if it feels tacky or if it still feels a little damp. So now that my tumbler is completely dry and I just feel it sticky and no damp spots, I am going to cut some of my foil off. This is really just like a six by 12 sheet. And I am just going to lay it across my tumbler and we're going to rub it in really good, pretty much just like you would do like you're burnishing glitter into a tacket tumbler. We're going to do the same thing with this foil. And this is so the image attaches really well to the tacket. And I like to use my little scraper with the felt end on it. I think it works really well. Some people have suggested using stencil brushes, but I feel like for me personally, the um, felt little squeegee end works well. So once we feel like it's burnished in pretty good, we're going to peel that piece off. And I'm going to cut another section. I had some glue on my scissors or vinyl, I think. 
So now we're going to go in and distress the edges because we don't want the edges to be just this weird angled section. So I'm just going in with a little square and we're just rubbing and distressing the edges of that one piece that we just did. So now we're going to cut another section for the other half of this tumbler. So we're going to lay it down just like before and really burnish that image into the tumbler. And it's okay if there are wrinkles um, on the foil, that's not gonna affect the outcome. The color will still transfer to the tumbler. And if you peel it up and feel like you need some more, you can always just go back in with that foil and stick it on the sticky parts of the tumbler. And now we're gonna take another little square and we're just going to do the same thing like before, just distress those edges. And since this um, pattern is mainly just two different colors of silver, you're not really going to be able to tell that the distressed parts are not necessarily matched up with the undistressed parts um, because it's all silver. If you had a pattern that was had more colors in it, then you may have to um, kind of match the colors up to the edges so that it looks a little bit more seamless. I hope that makes sense. But you can see here, um, where if there's a darker part on the edge, then I try to find a darker part of silver um, on the little square that I have and was kind of matching up the darker silvers to the darker silver that was already on there. And then the lighter silvers on the lighter parts. So now I'm just going to do the bottom real quick. And I am just pressing this foil down into the sides as well and around the edges just to make sure there's good coverage there. And then we're going to peel it off. And in the video, it looks a little bit more distressed than it actually looks like in real life. I think that's because my ring light was shining directly on the foils. So we are just burnishing. I pretty much did about an inch and a half up from the bottom. And this is a 30 ounce modern, I believe. So now I'm just peeling these foils off of my tumbler. And I really like these foils because even though it's leopard print, it's not like you really have to look to see the leopard print because it's silver on silver, which I really, really liked. I thought it was a really cool pattern. So we're just doing the same thing as before. We're just going around the edges and distressing them a bit so it doesn't just look like a 
strange angle that was cut off. So I'm really just kind of rubbing right where this foil meets the edge and then pulling off. And then I'm just going around and seeing if there are any spots that maybe I didn't um, rub as good or the transfer didn't transfer as well in some spots. And then just distressing some in the center of the tumbler as well. So I was pretty happy with how this turned out. So I debated on adding um, some microfine glitter to the epoxy, but I decided I didn't want the glitter all over the tumbler. I just wanted it in some areas. So since the tumbler already had tacket in some areas, um, I was able to brush some microfine glitter onto some of the spots where the tacket was still exposed. And I just kind of brushed on some glitter in some areas. And this is just a micro fine silver. I don't even know where this one is from. Um, I don't have a label on the jar, so it could be from anywhere, um, but it's just a micro fine holographic silver. And I'm doing the same thing to the bottom, just finding some areas where tacket is still tacky. And brushing on some silver. And after I get this glitter on there, I put it on my turner for a layer of epoxy. I did not seal anything. Um, you know, I like to do trial and error for you guys just to see if you need to seal, if you don't need to seal. And I did not have an issue with epoxy repelling from these foils or anything like that. So after I added everything, I just put it right on my turner and added a layer of epoxy. So here is our epoxy step. This is just fast set that I am using just for the first layer. Um, I know a lot of people ask about fast set and white cups and I use it for white cups. I use it for every color cup and I've never had an issue. As long as you do thin layers, then the epoxy should not appear amber. If you guys have specific questions about that, please feel free to ask in the comments. And the tumbler next to this one is a fun vintage horse tumbler. I will link that in the video above if you guys want to check that one out as well. So I am just making sure everything is smoothed out well, no globs of epoxy, anything like that. And then I'm going to take my torch from CCDIY and we're going to pop all the bubbles. I usually go around the tumbler one full rotation.
And once this is cured, we will be ready to apply our decal. So I am sending my decal to my Cameo. I do have a Silhouette Cameo for those of you wondering. And I chose to do silver and white vinyl colors for this decal. I just wanted something simple that would go with the theme of the tumbler. Just a classy silver and white. So here is our tumbler after the first layer of epoxy. I really like the metallic foil under the epoxy. It turned out super pretty. And these are our decals. I chose to use the textured Cricut silver vinyl. Um, I felt like it really went with the metallic silver foils that were on the tumbler. And I'm going to use my lined transfer tape. I really like using the lined transfer tape because it just really helps me kind of line everything up really good. So I am just taking the top vinyl and just lining it up with the silver vinyl underneath and then pressing it down really well to get everything stuck together. Sometimes vinyl, regular vinyl is a little difficult to stick to the um, textured vinyl. It's just the coating on the, on the textured vinyl. Um, so I do always seal this particular textured vinyl before I epoxy because I have found that epoxy does not like this vinyl. It will repel and um, sometimes separate even after the epoxy has cured. So with my lines, I pretty much take the top line, line it up with the tumbler, and then slide it down just a little bit if I need to. But those lines are a really, really good guide. So with my decal, I am just going to press everything down one letter at a time, um, especially on curved cups because you don't want the vinyl to get wrinkled or stuck to the cup without being perfectly straight. So if you're pushing one letter down at a time, it's a lot easier to fix something or adjust something if you need to. So once I'm sure everything is good and stuck, see just like that, that vinyl does not like to stick to the textured vinyl. This is why it's always a good idea to seal if you use this type of vinyl. I don't seal all my decals, only certain vinyls. So I will seal this vinyl really good. I will use Quick Coat or Mod Podge. I don't use spray adhesive to seal vinyl because some vinyl will react with the spray adhesive. And once the sealer is dry, I will pop this back on my turner for another layer of epoxy. I usually do two layers over decals and once the final layer of epoxy is dried, you will be done. And here are some finished pictures of this cup. I think it turned out really pretty. Just a classy silver leopard tumbler. It's winter without being Christmas or holiday related. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. And if you guys try foils, be sure to post so I can see them. If y'all enjoyed this video or learned something new, please be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Don't forget to catch the next video coming up that was picked just for you. As always, if you're looking for more tips, tricks, or tutorials, be sure to check out my tutorial group on Facebook or my Patreon group. Both are linked in the description. Thanks for watching.